This is going to be a study on the subject of biblical butterfly effects. And the butterfly effect is an idea that says that a small change can make bigger changes happen. An example they give of a butterfly effect is when a butterfly flaps its wings in Chicago and a tornado happens in Tokyo. So tiny changes in complex systems cause huge effects. So in your life, you make small choices that can have big consequences. And at the beginning of your Bible, you will see such a small thing that had an enormously bad outcome, a huge effect from such a small choice. As you know the story, Adam and Eve were put into the Garden of Eden, a garden with many trees that were pleasant to the side, a garden with plenty of food and perfect temperature. You also know what happened next. In Genesis 3.1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the tree of we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So you see, something as small and simple as Adam and Eve taking an apple off of a tree and taking a bite out of that apple brought sin into the world. What does the New Testament say about this story? It says in Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So it took one man, it took one apple, and the bad decision to eat that apple when God said not to. That's what brought sin into the world. When Adam did that, sin got into his blood, and now we have sinful blood. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. The small little decision that they made changed all of human history forever. That was a butterfly effect. Do you realize that if Eve never ate the fruit, then the world as you know it wouldn't be here? They would still be here, Adam and Eve, on earth, in a paradise with billions and trillions of children running around everywhere. Now go back a bit further. What if the devil... When he was a Lucifer, never rebelled. What if there was no serpent who was more subtle than any beast of the field that came down to tempt Eve? Because he was still a anointed cherub that was perfect in beauty and perfect without sin. In Ezekiel 28:15, it says, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So there was one time when the devil was Lucifer and he was without iniquity. In Isaiah fourteen twelve through 15, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will send into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit up also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So you see, the devil has a pride problem. Iniquity was found in him. And if there is a gap between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2, when the Lord brought a catastrophic event because of Satan's rebellion, this never would have happened if it hadn't been for him wanting to be like God, wanting to take the throne, being jealous of God. You know what else? Think about why hell was prepared. In Matthew 25:41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Without sin, there would have been no need for hell. If it was prepared for the devil and his angels, and the devil, the devil never sinned, it seems there would have been no need for hell. What if the people didn't build the Tower of Babel 
in Genesis chapter 11 and get together leaving God out of things, would God have still came down and confounded their language? Think about that. What about Abraham? As you know, Abraham was promised a seed in Genesis 15, 5 through 6. It says, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. So Abraham and Sarah were not patient concerning having a child. And this led to a big consequence. In Genesis 16, 1 and 2, it says, Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had in handmaid an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing, I pray thee, Go in unto my maid, it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Now go down a few verses in verse 11. It says, The angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. So if Abraham would have waited, then this line of people would have been born. If he would have waited until he had Isaac with Sarah, he would have never lain with Hagar and had Ishmael. And this is where you get Muslims from. This is where you get the, some of the greatest enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ is through Ishmael. And they are wild men, as the verse says. What about Israel's choice to make a request for a king? In 1 Samuel chapter 8, 5 through 7, it says, And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But this thing, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. If this never happened, it would have continued a theocracy instead of a monarchy. It would have been completely different if the people didn't request a king. God would have ruled as king in their heart. And what about in 1 Samuel 23 when David asked the Lord about going to Keilah? In 1 Samuel 23, 10 through 13, it says, Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down? As thy servant hath heard, O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant how the... As, and the Lord said, He will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Keilah, and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he forbear to go forth. So had David been killed by Saul because of a bad choice to stay in Keilah, then David's life in 2 Samuel wouldn't have taken place. Therefore, there would be no King Solomon. What about David's horrible decision with Bathsheba? In 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 3, it says, And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem, and it came to pass in evening, evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So what David did here when he took Bathsheba which is Uriah's wife, this ends up resulting in the death of his son. But it also resulted in the birth of a man the Lord used to write Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon and Proverbs. And the man also becomes one of the greatest types of Christ in the Bible. 
In 2 Samuel 12, 24, it says, And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her, and lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. So David saw Bathsheba bathing, and the rest is history. Look at all that came from that. He lost a child. He lost his testimony. He lost a lot of respect from people. But Solomon came from Bathsheba and David, one of the greatest characters in the Bible. Such a huge butterfly effect. David had to be home. David had to be walking on the roof. He had to see Bathsheba bathing. Bathsheba had to be bathing in a place where someone could see her. All these things had to come together for this to take place. And then you have King Hezekiah, the man who prayed for some extra years. In Isaiah 38, 1 through 3, it says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the son of Amos came unto him, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall, and prayed unto the Lord, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Now verse 4 and 5, Then came the word of the Lord to, Hez to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, The God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. So Hezekiah's decision to pray to God about his sickness added him fifteen years to his life. So think about that for a minute. Something you pray could greatly affect your life, could greatly affect someone else's life, yet you don't use this this powerful thing of prayer you you forget all about it you forget how it prayer changes things and a small little decision to pray affected hezekiah's life added 15 years what a butterfly effect that is but something else came out of this during those 15 years hezekiah has a son named manasseh who would grow up to be the wickedest king ever if you look at 2 Kings 21, 1, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Hephzibah. So you see, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. That's Hezekiah's son. And he was born during that 15 years that Hezekiah had added on to his life. So had Hezekiah died, then Manasseh never would have been born. So you see what a small choice can bring. Now that was a good decision for Hezekiah to pray, but just one small change can make a big change. What about for us today? Your decision in this life affects eternity. And it affects the quality of life on earth, of your life. In James 5.20 it says, Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. If you get some drunk or dope head of, or blasphemer saved by simply handing him a gospel tract or simply sharing the gospel with him, do you have any idea what kind of future sins that wouldn't take place? What if someone had witnessed to the mass shooters you see on TV? What if someone got through to Ted Bundy or John Wayne Gacy or the Golden State Killer or the Zodiac Killer? What if someone got through to that abortionist who was hiding aborted babies in his house? If someone had witnessed to them and they had gotten saved there, then there wouldn't have been a multitude of sins that came from their wicked life most likely most likely someone like Charles Manson wouldn't committed those horrible acts had he gotten saved he would still be a 
sinner because he's got flesh, but most likely he could have been a Bible believer and not been in that situation to commit all those sins. And the Bible says, None of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. You affect someone else. You affect the quality of your life on this earth with small decisions. One little small decision can ruin your testimony and can ruin just the sinner's outlook on Christians. And just one little decision can cause you so much pain and grief later on. In Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So you can shorten your days because of sin. You can reap horrible things because of small decisions that you make today. Romans 8.13 says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Say that you quit doing all the pet sins you have today. Imagine that, how, that, how that's going to affect your life in the long run. Say that you quit drinking or smoking today. Imagine the effect that's going to have on your body in the long run. Say that you quit fornicating or committing adultery or watching pornography today. Imagine how that's going to affect your marriage relationship for the rest of your life. And now here's a big butterfly effect in the Bible. What if the Jews didn't continue to reject Jesus Christ in the book of Acts? In Acts 13, 46, it says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So that he's referring there to the Jews' rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If the Jews had have ended up accepting Jesus Christ as their Messiah, then the church age, the time that we're in now, wouldn't have taken place, and John the Baptist would have been Elijah. Jesus said himself in Matthew eleven twelve through 14, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Now listen to this. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. So Jesus said himself, John the Baptist would have been Elias if the Jews accepted Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Malachi 4, 5 through 6 says, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So Elijah is coming back before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And in Matthew seventeen eleven through 12, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. So as you know, they killed John the Baptist. They knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. They rejected him just like they rejected Jesus. So if the Jews would have accepted Jesus Christ, accepted the message of John the Baptist, Jesus Christ would have still died on the cross for our sins, but the church age never would have taken place. Stephen preached Jesus to the Jews, but they ended up stoning him. And right before they stoned Stephen, he saw the heaven opened and the Lord standing on the right hand of God. Not sitting, standing. Wonder what would have happened if the Jews didn't continue to reject Jesus. Maybe Jesus was ready to come back, but they stoned Stephen. They rejected his message and rejected the message, as you see through the book of Acts. And the trib would have started back then had they not rejected Jesus. And the church age never would have come about because the Lord wouldn't have been provoking the Jews to jealousy with the Gentiles, with the church, you see. 
So think about your testimony. What if you hadn't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ when you did? You might have sinned your way to an early grave already. Uh, Psalms 55, 23, But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. Did you know that the decision you made to believe on Jesus Christ changed something as big as eternity? That decision decision you made that took place in your heart affected all eternity. Small decisions you make have big consequences. Getting someone saved has eternal consequences. That person will not have to go to hell. You, as a small, little, sinner, insignificant person, can have an everlasting effect. You can change eternity. So I hope this will encourage you to do that. This has been a study on biblical butterfly effects.